So you make art and you want to grow a following on social media, well you're in the right place babes because today I'm going over the ultimate guide to grow a social media following. For the past 8 years, I've grown social media accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers with my art in different niches on all different platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it babes, except for Pinterest because I haven't tried her out yet. I am very fortunate that it's my main source of income as a college student right now. Now it's not like every single one of my accounts has been successful, there have definitely been some flops babes, but from all these experiences, I learned how to better navigate and how to have a better literacy when it comes to branding yourself on each different platform. So let's start from the very beginning and say you have zero followers. The first thing you're going to do is make sure your username doesn't have a lot of dashes or periods because you want to make your username eye-catching and easy to remember so that people who talk about you in person or online can spell it easily. And also make sure your profile is just something that stands out, something that's true to your brand, something that's true to you. If you're a quirky person and you just have like a couple lines, love it. If you don't want your identity at all and you love the blank profile, love it. And if you're trying to build a business, of course the logo would help. Now the first piece of content you're gonna make is taking your art or whatever product you're trying to sell or show off and you're gonna make a 6 to 15 second video on it. And that is because short form content babes is popping off right now. She's popping off. First it started with Vine becoming super popular, then of course TikTok and then Instagram Reels copied it. So start with that short form video content and you can participate in trends that are super broad for every single niche. As of filming this, I'm gonna put up some recent examples of what those can be and how you can apply it to yourself. You swap me? You can't, bitch! I come back every time and I come back better. Who the fuck's doing it like me? Right. I put the helipad over there. I put my Olympic size swimming pool over there. The five bed mansion can go over there. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, fuck. No. I charged $3,000 for these, and a lot of people have been asking why. And although I think the question is a little bit disrespectful, I'll answer for people who are genuinely curious. Another idea for this video is to just show your process. Everyone loves a good process video, especially for art or a product, because they want to see the care and the time that's put into it. And so showing that off could be really great for your brand, babes. And do not try to be perfect with your very first video because you're just trying to push out content as fast as you can, as much as you can, every single day. And you're going to take this video and repurpose it across all different platforms. So let's say you made the video in-app on TikTok. You're going to post it, it's a cute vibe, have a little caption, have a little hashtag or two in there. And then once you post it, you can just download the video and save it as a live photo so you can remove the watermark. You can then convert the live photo into a video and you can repost that version on Instagram Reels. YouTube Shorts, Pinterest, X, formerly known as Twitter. Elon, what the fuck? Now, when you start off, you are in a specific niche based on your art style, your medium that you work with, the product that you have, whether it's ceramic, clay, earrings, etc. But when you're growing from the ground up, it's very difficult to control where a video lands on people's For You page. And so the trends you participate in, make sure, again, they are broad enough. Because let's say it lands on like a high schooler's page who's interested in science and you're an artist. You still want to have that trending sound or that trending format or CapCut template as the very backdrop of your video so that they have an entry point into seeing what kind of content you're going to make. Again, niches are great, but people overemphasize them, I feel like, and especially when you're starting out, you want to have a broader audience, and then you can niche it down from there. Now it's time for the bigger chunk of this video on how to make a series, y'all. Series are so important. Series are amazing. Everyone loves a good series. Netflix too. Series are great because it gives an automatic continuity throughout your entire content. So if someone sees one of the videos, they know that the rest of your content is going to look similar. They can jump to your previous videos, wait for a new one to drop, and there's just a really great through line. Now, embarrassingly, I've made a ton of different series that have worked okay for better or for worse. So I'm just gonna go through some case studies on potential video series that you can do to help you grow, babes. Grow, grow, grow. So when I started TikTok, I had zero followers and I thought that'd be interesting to draw everyone who follows me. So I made a video saying that i draw your profile picture if you follow, like, and comment and save the video. And this worked really well at first. I quickly got a thousand followers and only a handful of them did the requirements, I guess, of what I asked in order to be drawn. So I really drew maybe like a hundred people out of 
of the thousand and the rest were just watching periodically who I was drawing and to see if it looked like the person, if it was a bad sketch, if they were gonna judge it, critique me, etc. So call to actions and giving free services to people based on how they interact with your video is a very great way to start growing a following. However, this might not be sustainable for the long future, so you wanna switch it up after a bit. The second series I did is actually so embarrassing and it haunts me today. I used to draw caricatures of like popular content creators and compare them to different cartoons I've seen. So I think one of them was comparing like Noah Beck to Larry the Lobster. It was a weird vibe. I don't know what was going on in my head. It was like the pandemic era, babe. So don't judge me too hard for that. And this featured a lot of different people because first of all, if I got lucky, the content creator themselves would see the video and stitch it or duet it and react to it. Two, the people that follow those creators would see the video and be waiting to see how I, how I depict them, if my perception of these creators aligns with what they perceive the creators to be, if it's different. Either way, it's interesting because people People love a good comparison moment between the drawing and the person. And three, there was humor behind it because it looked nothing like the creator. I don't know what was going on in my head, but it looked had no correlation. There was no correlation. But yeah, that was an embarrassing moment for me, but it did help me grow like 100,000 followers, if not 200,000. And I met a lot of friends along the way, actually. So shout out Marissa Wren, actually. You were one of the first people I did. Love it, love it. Now the third and final case study was the best series I ever made on TikTok and it was when I made a puffer jacket out of cardboard that was oversized and I wore at the end. This was like a seven, eight day endeavor where I film, edited, and worked on my piece for like three to four hours every single day and gave a live update, a play by play on the progress of this cardboard sculpture that I was creating. And it was one really great because I had a voiceover. So it introduced a lot of people to my personality, whereas before, or I would just have a sound in the background. And so there was even more of a distance between myself as a creator and the video and the audience. Whereas now I was kind of collapsing the video and including more of myself in it by having a voiceover and explaining the art piece and how the art piece related to me, masculinity, kind of identity stuff. So I was really just kind of introducing myself in a way through this series. And looking back, I think it was a lot more interesting because people were always asking the question, like how are you gonna make a puffer jacket out of this rigid material like cardboard, like what are you gonna do? And I ended up deconstructing the cardboard and peeling back every single one of the layers and sewing it together with twine. And people found it creative enough to keep watching even if they weren't artists themselves. But also it's a clothing item that I'm recreating and everyone has worn a clothing item before. I think, babes, I think. Ever since Adam and Eve, are you kidding me? So everyone could relate to it in a sense and see, oh babes, does the puffer jacket in my closet, is it gonna look like that cardboard thing? What's gonna be the deviation here? Is it gonna look the same? Who knows? And that suspense kept people watching. So series with voiceovers or just progress updates are really great to just showcase your personality to the viewer while also keeping them on a, a through line for a duration of time. Now my next tip beyond short form content because babes, you might get bored of it, is to post pictures and carousels on Instagram and you can also post photos now on TikTok in a carousel method and keep your content updated with different forms of media like photos versus videos because even though photos aren't necessarily gonna pop off in the algorithm and it's a lot harder to grow your followers on just photos, they're really great for strengthening your community. They may be interested in still images or think that there's something missing out of your content if you're branding yourself as an all around platform creator. They may get like confused with the brain if they only see the same reels as they do on TikTok, they might want a bit more, a bit more diversity, babes, as opposed to just re-uploading the same video on each platform. And eventually you can just shout out yourself on TikTok being like, hey, if you wanna see extra content from me, you can see all my Instagram stories where I give real time live updates and just fun personality snapshots of my life. Also, some days you just don't wanna film a video and that's okay. And so if you're able to just have a photo or a still of a previous video that you've already created, it's another form of content that you can just get out there as opposed to just posting nothing because honestly on social media at this point now 
more is better for when you're starting out because it's really hard to grow consistently and again have a strong community if you post only once a week on tiktok and every other creator around you is posting seven times a week you're gonna get drowned in that kind of sea of content unless you have like a really standout video or standout concept each time it's gonna be difficult to grow that's one of the downsides about tiktok and instagram as fast as you grow is as fast as you'll fall babes like if you fall off like you can fall off which is what i've done many a time but hopefully you're able to pick it back up and get into a consistent groove another reason why having both videos and photos is important is because if brands reach out to you to do a collaboration or pay for advertising space it's nice to know that you have options on posting methods you have like options that you can present certain advertisers when they are approaching you yeah that's just a fun little little tidbit now for the fun segment of the video, y'all. The last segment, rapid fire tips and tricks. Number one, make sure the formal parts of your video are strong in that there's good lighting, not too warm, not too cold. And the most interesting parts of the visual is in the upper two thirds because if this was a vertical video and you're down here, the caption is gonna cut your face off or cut the product off or cut the artwork off. So having the upper two thirds is gonna be the best vibration. Two, try to post every single day if you're able to on each platform, but also make sure that it doesn't interfere with the art making process or your business if you're selling a product. Three, link your Instagram in your TikTok page. Very simple, super easy. It helps people get to your other platform. Four, respond to as many comments as you can. I always Always try to respond to every single comment or interact with it by liking it on Instagram or if it's a YouTube longer video, I will try to respond to literally every single person unless there's like over like a hundred comments then I kind of can't really do that. And on TikTok, honestly, I reply or like every single comment unless it's a hate comment then I just ignore it. Interacting with your community is really, really important. Five, if a video flops but you really believe in it, just repost it. Like literally repost it because sometimes the algorithm doesn't catch everything babes. Sometimes you make a banger of a video and it just flops because the algorithm wasn't bad enough to catch it. I posted this animation to Instagram Reels and girl, I knew the animation was good. I knew the animation was strong. I knew the concept was strong and I knew I delivered it in a way that was very accessible and easy to understand. And I was like, why is this getting literally only like five likes babes? Like that's crazy. So I deleted it after a couple days, reposted it, deleted it, reposted it. And on the third or fourth time, I just let it up and let it sit for a week and then it became my most viewed video on Reels. Like if you truly believe in a video, just delete and repost it and see what happens. Also, if you don't end up deleting it, you can just repost older videos because people forget that they've seen a video sometimes and you're just giving the content a chance at a second life. So if you also are super tired one day and can't film, just repost an old TikTok an old video and see what happens. Six is to not get discouraged if numbers are growing stable or declining at all. People always talk about their success stories and how they grew overnight, but it literally took so much time for them to get to that point. I personally had a period last summer where I gained like 200,000 subscribers in three months for just reposting my TikToks onto YouTube Shorts. And I consider myself very lucky for that and people ask me how I grew so fast, but I had been making those videos for probably over a year on just TikTok before I even transferred it over to YouTube Shorts. And even before that, I had been making videos in middle school that just completely flopped. I was trying to be like the Joey Grissett by Tyler Oakley's that I saw, the Conan Gray's that I watched when I was in high school, the Emma Chamberlain, and they all flop, 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 flop. All those failures led up to the very mini small content creator platform I have now that I'm very grateful for. So don't get discouraged, keep on pushing. Number seven, follow the people in your community, get to know them, DM them, reach out, say, hey, what's up? I see your content, love your content. I think we really vibe. Because you should be well-versed in the people that are in your community to just see what's up, see what trends are happening, see if you can hop on them, collaborate with any people. But also, if it comes down, especially in the art world, to showing your creations in person, in the gallery context, or even when you're selling things at a booth, if you make stickers or enamel pins or etc., you can literally just sell at a convention together or just sit next to each other and help each other out. And you never know what's gonna happen when you're friends with people with similar interests as you that can also help you grow and you can help them grow in the future. The final thing I'm gonna say, especially if you're a content creator that's an artist and have a practice as well or a business, is to not sacrifice your creativity and ideas and mental health for growing on social media. 
if you keep at your practice and you keep at your work and you try your best, I guarantee you something will come out of it at whatever scale it does happen. Followers, likes, comments are not everything and I personally had a lot of mental health issues surrounding all of that because I tied my self-worth into numbers and that was not beneficial, especially when I was 14 in high school making web comics in my bedroom, like praying I hit like a thousand followers in X amount of days. And also if something isn't working and you hit a roadblock, it's okay to pivot. I pivoted so many times times in like content creation, whether it's the past series that I've mentioned that are super embarrassing, but also helped me grow. It's more fun and exciting for audiences to see you grow as a person as well. And also your priorities may change over time. Like for example, also your priorities may change if you do grow on social media. I, I know that I took a huge backseat posting on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram because I was more focused on growing my art practice and doing everything I do in the studio because that was more valuable to me and I was privileged enough to have the time and the space to explore those opportunities. And honestly, it did hurt me in the algorithm. It has been very hard, babes, to jump back into it. Also, there's like nudity in my art, so I don't think the algorithm liked that or particularly enjoyed it, especially when they try to ban me on TikTok but we don't talk about that. So there you have it, my ultimate guide on growing on social media. And I really hope that y'all are encouraged and now feel more confident in pursuing your passions and just maybe took away something that helps you in your own career path as a content creator if you're even at all interested in that. And let me know if I should make another video going in depth on a certain topic. But with all that being said, y'all, um, first, follow my Instagram. Follow my Instagram, at Brett Payne. Babes, like, it's there. She's there, she's ready for you to follow, like, comment. Also my TikTok, if you're interested in that, Brett Payne. But yes, thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you like the video, like the video. If you have a fun comment, critique, or joke to share, comment down below. And if you like me, my art, or wanna follow my journey as an art student in LA, you can subscribe. It's a fun time here. And I think that's the end of the video. That's the end of the video.